Houdini 20 brings some new nodes to Vellum, so let's take a look at what they are and some of the new things that you can do with them. So I am in Solaris here. I'm gonna start working in this a lot more, I think, just to get people used to working in Solaris and how it all works without actually having to know a ton about how all USD works. So this project file will be available on Patreon. If you wanna grab it, you can grab it on there. Let's go ahead and create a scene here. So drop down a stop create. Let's drop a grid down and let's set this in the YZ plane. And let's crank up the rows and columns to like 50 by 50. Then we can drop down a vellum configure cloth because we're going to be working with vellum. And we can come to this pinpoints, and this is really all we need to do with this node. And then select the top row of points just so that our object doesn't just fall straight down. Then we can drop down a vellum solver. And we can dive inside. And if we create a pop wind, can wire that in and set the wind velocity to the negative x direction. So we'll set this to like negative three. So this is the positive x. And if I jump out and press play, we have some wind on our little grid there. So the new node that they kind of highlighted as like the, the main one is the vellum wind shadow is what they call it, but it's really a pop wind shadow. So it actually does work with pops, so we'll kind of go over that here in a little bit. But it does work with pops and anything that uses these pop dynamic nodes. So let's go ahead and actually create a geometry to use as our blocking geometry. So we'll create a box. And I'm going to go ahead and just crank up the scale here. Let's actually just template that. And let's make this like 14. Let's also make a copy of this, and we're going to scale this down a little bit something like that should be fine and then let's increase the size here and let's just make sure that we don't have anything overlapping in the front so we're going to cut a hole in the front here and that's going to be our allow our window pass through so let's create a boolean here and wire those in take a look at that gives us this object that's kind of containing our grid in there we can drop down a tube and in this tube let's set it to the x-axis let's also enable our end caps set our columns to something more like 30 and then we can increase our radius and our height quite a bit here and let's just move it so that we can actually cut that hole so we'll drop down our boolean and we shall wire those in whoops if i can wire them there we go so now we have this object that is cutting a hole in the, the center there, and that is going to allow our wind to pass through. So let's drop down a null and just call that whatever we want, but I'm going to call it out blocker, and we'll use that as our blocking geometry. So let's dive back into our solver here, and in the pop wind shadow, we need to take this external geometry. This is what your wind blocker is. Let's set that to a SOP and Let's set that to our blocker that we just created. So now if I go ahead and reset our simulation and press play, nothing happens. It's because we do need to do one other thing that I forgot about, and that is set the max distance here. So let's just crank that up and then reset, and we should be good here, which we are. So we have the simulation kind of starting here in the center. It's kind of a little bit hard to see. Let's just untemplate those. So it's kind of starting in the center, it's pushing hard in the center there, and then it's kind of moving its way out and simulating out from there. So we can affect the size of this hole here. So if I just lower that, create a tighter hole for that to pass through, and I reset our simulation. It's really gonna start in the center there, and you can see it's pushing in on the center. And that's really all it's really affecting is the very center of our grid. That's because the rest is being blocked out. So I know it's pretty cool. You can do some interesting stuff with that, some cool stuff there. But there's a, another node that kind of goes along with it. And that is the pop mask from shadow node. 
So if we take this, this is going to create a mask of where the shadow is falling. So if I take this and set the collision geometry to that same SOP that we had there, so the out blocker, and then let's just crank up the max distance on this one as well. If I come back here, if I jot down a color node, you can visualize this mask. So let's go ahead and set this group type to points because the mask is going to be on the points. We'll do at mask is greater than zero and we'll set that to like red color. Let's jump back to frame one here, reset our simulation. And now if I press play, we should be having a color on our geometry. Sometimes this glitch is out, so let's just reset our viewport. And there we go, we have the mask on our geometry. So I'm not really sure how useful this would be for really much of anything other than maybe some interesting movement of a mask across your geometry, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that's going to come up with something that's going to be useful for this, but uh, for me, I don't think it's really that useful right now for what I can think of, but it is there if you would like to use it. Or maybe it's even not useful for, for um, vellum but uh, maybe it's more useful for like pops or something. But then there's also a, another node that goes along with this, which is the pop attribute blur. So we can now blur attributes in pops. So let's just set that to mask. And before we really blur it out, let's go and create a new box. We're going to leave this kind of the same size. We'll maybe make it a little bit bigger like that and let's move it forward just a little bit and we'll wire that into our blocker so we don't have to change anything and we can go back in here and reset our simulation if i press play you may not have anything again let's try to reset our viewport still not giving us anything so let's do one other thing let's come into the mask from shadow and let's increase this shadow angle and the shadow samples there. And you see that we should have something there. So we have basically just the bottom of this, this plane being masked out. It starts in the center and then it kind of travels to the bottom. So we can come into the pop attribute blur. And if we increased the blurring iterations here, you can see that that is a little bit bigger now. You can see that it had some holes in it. So we're actually blurring that out and getting a nice little blur on our geometry or our, our mask there. So you can use that for all sorts of different things as well. You no longer have to use it outside of the simulation. You can actually just use it directly inside the simulation, although it is not, uh, not going to be just like you drop it down and, um, you can just see where it's blurring out. You're gonna have to reset and everything. So that kind of sucks a little bit, but you know that's how just how how the simulations work. But we can actually use these inside of a pop net as well, as I said. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let's create a sphere here, and let's go back to this geometry, and let's template that. So I'll set this to a polygon and we'll crank up the size maybe a little bit here and move this up, oops, not forward, but up towards the top here. And we can wire this in here, our pop net. Let's go ahead and disable those guides. And we need, we're just creating them. So we need to create some gravity. So let's drop down a gravity force and now they should be falling. So we can wire in that pop wind again. Whoops. So if we wire in our pop wind, set this in the negative X direction. So negative three or four, we'll do three. And then let's actually just give this some amplitude as well, just so it gives us some variation. Now we have some wind on our particles. We drop down our pop wind shadow now. We can again set the blocker. So we'll set that to our blocker and increase the max distance. And now if I press play, you see that we get some 
when blocking going on inside of our challenge. Now obviously it's getting to the bottom of our, our cube there and it's getting blown out once it does that, but inside of our, our cube we have this wind that is kind of being, uh, that's traveling through our hole and just kind of offsetting things and we can go in here and you know mess around with the radius of this get some different looks but overall like I said you can use this inside pops or anything that has um, that has the pop dynamics so basically everything so you can use this for greens if you want I think you could do some cool stuff with that it's not just for for vellum I'm not sure exactly why they marketed this as like just a vellum tool because it is something that you can use with with other other simulation types as well so a little odd that they did that I'm also surprised that they didn't say anything about let's not calculate all this they didn't say anything about the mask from shadow or the pop attribute blur at least that I saw in the the presentation um, just a little odd that to me that they would leave that out but whatever I guess so go ahead and play around with these like I said I will leave the uh, the project file in the on patreon and so you can grab that uh, through the link in the description so grab that if you are interested you can go through and play around with these see how they all work and uh, yeah see what the what they'll be useful for but anyways if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check out the other videos on my channel. I have a bunch of other stuff that goes over a bunch of different things inside Houdini. So make sure to check those out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.